through all these things only to find it was all vanity. And remember, Solomon, at the end of his life, he's really old. You know, he, he, the wisest man alive finally comes to this conclusion. It's kind of like, you know, then, then we go into the Song of Solomon. But the point is, is that it's some really astute wisdom. You know, making of many books at that time was like making books was very difficult. So the making of books usually became a legacy. So making of many books, reading and studying lots of books, it's all vanity. When Jesus spoke, was he thumping the Bible every five minutes? Of course not. He'd say, well, as it is written once in a while. But he spoke because he was word, you know. We're hoping to capture the spirit of that here where there's a kind of a balance where it's not just hiding behind words. But they can't talk about this, you know. I mean, I mean your, your, your handlers and your controllers can't talk about this stuff because, you see, the same reason this movie Stigmata was so important is because the kingdom within you invalidates the church. And they were so worried that that gospel was so real, like somehow they wouldn't believe what was in Luke 17, 21. And on, they would, they would, but the one at Nag Hammadi, that gospel of Thomas, see, that'll bring the church down. So we have to kill anybody that's trying to, right? The conspiracies, we got to get rid of people. And, um, Wow. We got to get rid of people because we don't want them to find out that God is within us and all around us. And we have God and God has us. And it's, it's, however it manifests, however he leads us, that's, that's not for others to judge. So, and it's not for me to judge the church either. It's for me to point out the corruption. Yes, I've done that numerously. And I've worked through my own abuse issues of being abused by it and, and forgiven you know, I had to do that because I still irks. I mean, it still makes you shake your head. You just wonder how they can be there. And I, I just, yeah. You know, but I'm going to let that one go too. I'm going to let that go too. Why? It's really none of my business. You know, I'll, I'll see you if I see you down the way. You know? Um, for me, going into the institution of churchianity of any level, Catholic, Protestant, whatever, is not my calling. I'm, you know, the one outside, improperly dressed, long hair and beard, and unacceptable. And that's where I like to be. That's where he put me. He put me there and wandering around. And I could speak the same thing to other religions because I've, you know, that's why he had me study them, I guess, because then I could speak to them. I could speak to the Hindus. I can speak to the, you know, this spiritual path that we're on is legit for all of us. It's not, oh, because I have Jesus, you're illegitimate. See, there's another thing. I tell people, if you have God, just seek God and he'll, he'll that's all I got to do. I don't tell them you have to confess Jesus. Jesus, hail Jesus, Hitler, hail Hitler, hail Jesus, hail Stalin, hail Barack Obama, hail, 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 hail Jay-Z, hail pop culture, hail it all. And you're saved. Da. Saved. <laughs> hail this and hail that. How about hail yourself? Hail my navel. Hail my nether regions. Oh, this is even better. Hail all my excrement because it's holy. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. So you, we're having fun here, right? We're having a little fun. But, you know, at the end of the day, so when you get to this point where you see through it all, as many artists have, you don't double down on it and start, you know, telling them about, you know, the magic bus and stuff, you just step off. That's all. But, again, as I had seen Barack Obama, as a prodigal son showing me my Lord, I mean, you wouldn't believe the uproar of these Christians. Boy, they just thought I was as false a thing as possible. Then, finally, a guy in Germany goes, you're absolutely right. Satan is the prodigal son of, of God, the ultimate one. And I, and I have an answer for that finally, but not really because the prodigal son comes home at the end of the day. Or he wouldn't be prodigal. I mean, that's the, when you say prodigal, it means he comes home. 
So as much as you might hate this guy, at some point in his life, he's going home. Yep. Oh, that's not possible. Uh, you don't know. You see, that's where Christians get in so much trouble. Prejudging. Richard Wormbrandt, I suggest you read a little bit there. I mean, there's some very inspiring stories about how his torturers became brothers in Christ with him. And the, the people that killed his wife's family, he ends up coming over for dinner as a beloved friend. When he comes over to Jesus, then it's all forgiven and they have dinner together. Yes, yeah, you don't have that experience. It's like that. You just can't, you can't count. They say, well, are you going to repent for that comment that Barack Obama is a prodigal son? No, because it was given by the Lord. It's like, I'm not going to take that back. I'm not taking that back. I, I know, in the, in the flesh, I get mad and, you know, I don't like his, his lying and his tactics and all that. And, you know, I pray for him and next thing you know, he gets worse. <laughs> and he gets more authoritarian and more, just more didactic and more repetitive. And it's just, it's horrible. But I got no personal axe to grind with him. I mean, other than, you know, he's trying to destroy, you know, Saul, he's like doing Saul Alinsky's handbook, basically. And... um which was dedicated to Lucifer, by the way. So the, the left hates God because they're say, that's Satan's brood or whatever. Fine, that's the way it may look now. But that's not the way it's always going to be. And all those people are going to stab each other in the back anyway. And, if, and, you know, at some time in Barack Obama's life, he may repent. Is that going to kill you? And so might many entertainers who embrace the the devil and the Illuminati and whatever else to get their shot and whatever. Look, you know, you don't know what a person's going to do. I've just been given a word about the progression, how most people go through institution and then they do as, as the Beatles program to do. They, they let her into their heart and then they can start to make it better. Gee, I wonder what that song means. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, Anyway, so they, uh, I like to throw in the lyrics, you know, because I'm, I, I kind of came out of that whole thing. Although I'm not, you know, rock, I'm really more like dub and electronic, I'm more ambient and poetic and different, you know. But I, I still remember those roots. And I used to love that Hey Jude. And I heard it on uh, the radio. It was like a, it was a, a, on the AM radio. It played for 11 minutes or some long thing. They went, the na na nas went on and on and on. I just thought that was great. You know, <laughs> uh, but let her into your heart, start to make it better. Yeah, most people are going to go that way, and then they're going to church, and then they're troubled. Not everyone finds the Lord in church. Okay, it's very difficult. So usually, if you really do, you kind of come out a little bit. You know, you start. So the spiritual journey leads beyond that, and as you become more. Less mobile, older, more infirm. I hate to put it this way, folks, but this is really what's going to happen to even the staunchest holdouts. You start to want to make it right with you and God. And that's, you know, the turning of your heart. And it happens usually the out of the sight of other people where people think you're a bad person and whatever. Um, you, you know, uh, they think you're like, you know, you're a horrible person, you have a horrible reputation, let's say, because you were very successful on earth, let's say, so that, that's what gives you a horrible reputation amongst uh, you know, Christian observers or whatever. You didn't do it with the church. Anyway, so, you know, you do all this stuff, and then you start having your turn of heart, and then you start, you know, repenting, and maybe there's a son or a daughter who's a lamb, and they come to help you, you, you know, and pretty soon it's all right and you realize you've done wrong and you get on your knees and you ask for forgiveness and you're forgiven and you go with the Lord. My grandfather, that's exactly what happened with him. That's going to happen with many, many, many people. At the end of the day, so Jesus was adamant, my, the sheep hear my voice and they come with me right now and the rest of them are off. And then, no, but he didn't talk about, yes, at that time it was very important that if you believe he's the Lord, you're going to stand and die for it. So it was an immediate thing. But he didn't talk about the progression of people through their lives except with Nicodemus. 
He said to Nicodemus, look, you've got to be, who was a wealthy man, right? Very much a man of the world. And, and he was saying, well, what do I have to do to be saved? And he says, you've got to be born again. Hence the spiritual quest. You know, God calls you. He pulls you. He's in you. He's around you. Your awareness increases. And then that's all that becomes important. Whenever that happens in a person's life, I'm not saying it's going to happen in every life, but whenever that happens in a person's life, um, it's none of my business. You know? So, but just realize this. You can see the biggest liar, cheat, criminal, probably those are in politics, but you can see those people for what they are today and then see them, you know, on their deathbed later. You've heard of the deathbed confession. The, the, the people who are called out visibly of the world, in other words, to speak truth to power, that's the point. That's why they're called out of the world. To speak prophecy, which is the unfolding and uncovering of, you know, the truth. It's not making little predictions that World War III will start in, you know, 5.30 tonight and then whatnot, you know, and that the Lord will be here in New Jerusalem, blah, blah, blah. He'll be on his throne ruling with a rod of iron. And it's like uh, the kingdom of God's within you. Well, that really puts a a damper on things. How about the return of Christ blossoms his people into everlasting beings that are consciously walking around? That would be really weird, especially if there were beings of light in another dimension. (sighs) Oh, the church couldn't handle that. You New Agers could though, right? You kind of like that imagery. Something like that's what it is. You know, but, but again, all the lies are because, and the misperception is because of the control mechanism of the institutions that keeps that kind of knowledge away, keeps it on this rote track. Remember how sola scriptura could be used. Look, sola scriptura in the hands of um, a, a, re- a real person, a free person or whatever, uh, that, that if all they want to do is do scripture, they'd be fine, I think. But sola scriptura in the hands of a, of a uh, a German school mind control um, expert would be um, a very toxic, lethal, you know, horrible thing of control for people because they'd say, you know, they keep going to someone and say, hey, you know, this scripture says you can't do that. This, you can't do that. Okay. And everyone puts on a mask of being more perfect than they are. And then the next thing you know, the devil's running wild. Right. As soon as you start putting a mask on that you're better than you are, okay, that you're better than you are, right? Because everyone's checking you, you know, oh, whoa, well, you're violating that scripture right there. So you all have to be perfect in the sight of men. And then what happens is the raging sin, you know, because nobody confesses anything, it, it just rages underneath until it becomes the ultimate in perversion and becomes the kingdom of Satan. It just, it just it's, it's, it happens every time. So how do you beat all this? Well, you cannot beat it collectively. There is no such thing as a collective. There are no collectives. Even the communists are not a collective. There's no such thing. There's an illusion of a collective, but there's no collective. All there is in real reality is you is I am. There, I mean, there is no you. There's just I am. That means you and your Lord is all that there is to work out. You know, if he lead, I make people so mad when the Lord tells me, and because look, for a lot of years, I just, all I had was him to talk to, you know, that was it. So he says, this person is up to no damn good or that person. I just heed, you know, or he says, and when he speaks to me, it's not like, um, I, it's, it's hard to explain. It's, it's not like, what is this, the devil? You need people to check you to make sure you're not deluded. And it's like, no, the process isn't like that. It's been uh, proven over and over again to be 100% correct. So I don't really question it. It's like when Satan talks to me, it's like this. You suck. You're terrible. You shouldn't even be here. You're too cowardly even to kill yourself. People just think you're stupid and awful and old and ridiculous. And look what a laughing stock you're making yourself into. <laughs> okay? And it's like, but not in words. No, there are feelings that come over you. That's like satanic, right? And then the Lord is like, flaunted. Go forward. Be a joy. 
And, and by the way, this is what's happening. Don't trust a soul. It's like, okay, I don't trust a soul. I don't trust anyone. I trust the Lord. I don't trust my flesh either, for that matter, or myself, whatever that means. Right? Only the Lord I can trust. And he leads me here and here to teach you about, you know, to tell you, not teach you, you already know what I'm saying. So I'm telling you about the world as it is. You know, it's like a game show or the Truman Show or, you know, explaining this. And you've seen it in the Matrix movies and you've seen different aspects of this theme. And I'm showing you your institutions and showing you how in the Bible, the uh, Satan offered Jesus uh, the whole world and he, he owned all the institutions. It, nothing changed since then. I've shown you everything that's obvious to you, but from the perspective of standing outside of the, of the matrix or outside the paradigm, I've said in this that I'm extremely grateful for the Lord having opened my eyes and having comforted me when I felt so alone, so betrayed, so stabbed in the back, so left for dead, so poisoned, so many things happen, many bad things that and you're going to have to work on forgiveness for the rest of your life. No, it's already forgiven and forgotten for the most part. For, totally forgiven. Why? Because the Lord will actually, eventually you'll see enough so he dissociates you from yourself. Then you realize there's nothing to forgive because nothing happened. And once you get to that point, you're really getting on down the path. Now you're finding some peace. So you can, you can be talking to people that may be your enemy that are putting on a mask and talking to people who really are your friend and talking to people who really love you or people that hate you. You're, you're able to, to, to see all that or not talk to anyone because when you're at that particular state, which I see many of you are, so now is when you talk to the Lord. There's a whole kingdom there. There are zillions of angels and zillions of things going on you connect with that, and you will not be lonely, my friend. You will be led into purpose, because the Lord wants to use you to wake people up. Does he want everyone awake right now? No. Well, shoot, that can't be true. That's a human thing to think, that everyone should be awake right now. Every, should we win the world for Jesus right now? Huh? Ten million strong, should we do it? hundred million, ten billion, however many people, are, Right? To win the world for Jesus to make this a better place. Is that going to work it for you? That is not God's will, friend. That's not what he wants of us to do. He doesn't want me to do what you're doing. He doesn't want you to... See, when you're in the collective, everyone has to be in a hive mind. Religions, you know, organized religion is hive mind. Control. Everybody nods their heads up and down. You're in this little pattern of an illusory life that's got nothing to do with reality and until the Lord wakes you up. But you go to church, yes, you study the Bible, yes, you pray, yes. You're still asleep. You still think this is all real. You have some chick track thing in your mind or, 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 or a comic book, CIA comic book, circa the Jehovah's Witnesses style of comic bookery view of heaven. That's a program that's programming. Jehovah's Witnesses is programming. I know, boy, I used to invite them in, invite them in, invite them in. I was so lonely. I just wanted to talk about God. I just loved having him come in. I loved sitting around, and eventually they all just dumped me. Have you known anyone to be dumped by Jehovah's Witnesses? Because <laughs> I kept asking questions, and I made them nervous, you know. And they said, is it reasonable to believe this? After they would talk for a while. Yes, brother. It's very reasonable to believe that. Isn't it reasonable to believe that Jesus was a man and not God? Yes, who said he was God? I, that's ridiculous. You know what I mean? I, I would nod my head up and down. And I didn't even believe, I wasn't, you know, I, at that time I was just uh, kind of lost. I was, you know, going down to the beach and... I was trying to uh, get in shape and surf and, you know, I don't know. It was just kind of like 
trying to make peace. I was, I was very troubled, I suppose. I didn't, you know, my friend Peter, not, not Peter, my partner, but Peter from high school, he, um, he said he remembered me as being troubled. And I, when, I, when I finally hooked up, I wrote him, and I wrote him again. Eventually, he didn't write back, so probably there's nothing there. But, yeah, I'm, I feel like saying to him, you know, I'm still troubled like I was then. I'm just no different. I'm the same now as I was then. So if I was troubled, then I'm troubled now. And we always liked music, remember? We always liked music. Peter means the rock. And all the Peters in my life have all been terrific people. Just, they've had my back. They've been loyal. You know, they've been good guys. So it's not all, <laughs> it's not all bad. It's just, it's intense. This is intense. Um, the most immediate thing the Lord wants me to tell you right now is that he doesn't want you to just be a slave or enslaving others. You know, that's part of your institutional learning. People learn through socialization to take their part in that, you know, activity. And what you really have to do is seek it. I know you feel threatened that if you go to the Lord, then the hive who controls you will get upset with you and they might do something bad to you. So you stay in this kind of narrow thing telling yourselves every day that well, we've got the Lord. The Lord wants this. The Lord's put this on my heart. The Lord's doing that. The Lord's telling me this. We're prophesying. We got the Lord. Everything's cool, man. We've proven that, that you know, we don't have to give that up. That everything's cool. Everything's good. Everything's groovy. And I'm saying, who said anything about giving anything up? It's a progression of individuals, not a collective. And you will give up your worldly ways um, by the time you get to old age because you won't be able to function in that anymore. So it's going to go away. Now you feel guilty that you didn't do more to straighten the world up. And I'm here, here to tell you, unless the Lord straightens it up, it ain't getting straightened up because it's a genetic thing. It's DNA is what's caused all this. Not, not our fault. Yes, it is our fault. You've got to repent. And it's like, no, I can repent from here till doomsday. And until my DNA has changed, I'm still sinning. I don't want to. But it's programmed in the DNA. What, is it my fault? Did I do that? No, I didn't do that. So I'm sorry, you're not going to guilt trip me with that lie. That's part of the litany of lies of control that came from out of the Catholic Church and out of the whole Constantine thing. This is, this is, what's, this is how it all got corrupted. You make people feel guilty and ashamed, and then you control them. You know, God doesn't want us to feel bad. We're going to feel bad, and we do feel bad, but he's not the cause of it. That Holy Spirit's convicting you. That's what it is. Oh, yeah? Well, I felt guilty and ashamed my whole life. Is that the Holy Spirit? When, when someone says a compliment to me, I feel guilty and ashamed for all the things I didn't do that day. That's programming, and I've got to, I've, I need to lose that. Is that the Holy Spirit? Well, then you're wrong, aren't you? You see what I have to fight? You see what... So a daily bit. You see what? You've got to push back that kind of. I could say, "Oh, you're right, brother. I see the light." My, can you call me Winston, please? Yes, I see four fingers, not three. Be, I'm I'm really such a horrible sinner. I I really can't believe you're putting up with me here. I'm going to do what you tell me because you really know the way, and Jesus really loves you, and you're a great teacher. So I'm just nodding my head up and down and agreeing to do everything you tell me. And one day, maybe. You know, if the Lord wills it, I'll be able to do something in ministry. Oh, gosh, that's right. I tell you, had I heard someone preach like this when I was 17, I would have been all over it. I needed to hear this back then. In a way, I'm speaking to myself as a young man, hoping to impart something that will give his worried mind some ease to, to, to let you know that you're not wrong in your thinking. You're not wrong to think how weird it is to sell your soul in order to be a member of a church. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. The world's a lie. It's backwards. You've got to go that way in order to get in. And so it's anathema to God, yes. 
So the voice you're hearing isn't, probably isn't God. You know? But then God uses all of us, doesn't he? Including that. So that, I'm trying to, best as I can describe something very difficult to understand, it's multidimensional, the situation, and it's all God's will at the end of the day. God's in control. Now there's a cliche that we can all go to the bank with. This meaning, if you say he's in control, then he's in control of every event, every single thing that happened. He's not unaware of where Adam is wandering around the garden. He knows everything about everything at all times. Would you stipulate that to me? Let me just go ahead and win in this courtroom. Numero uno, what you were taught about the cosmogony is a lie. <laughs> the interpretation or the agreed upon general interpretation of original sin is based on a lie. It's used to make you feel guilty and control you. Guilt does not always come by the Holy Spirit. That's another lie. And I could go on and name hundreds more. It is man's way to feel guilty and ashamed, and then people end up pervertedly using it for fetishes, porno, criminality, because it gives a rush, you know, and, it, and because it's the wrong thing to do, so it's exciting and hence sex, and hence all kinds of things. And that's all part of the fallen human condition because we feel guilty and ashamed of it, and the ones who go up the ladder are the ones who become sociopaths and lose their guilt, become double-minded, have their consciences seared, and they seem to ascend the ladder of success, where the people that feel guilty and ashamed are called pathetic fools and laughed at. Right? And then the little you know, jackals in the church come after you, and, or, or your religion, or your temple, or your mosque, or wherever it is, or the PTA meeting, or anywhere, any group, you know, any group with a point of view, Republicans, Democrats, whatever. And you know, if you're a little bit outside the norm, or if you're starting to wake up and say, you know what, you guys are just as bad as the uh, Republicans in it. Or, or you Republicans, you're just as bad as the Democrat. No, oh no, you got it wrong. <laughs> right? And they'll do anything to keep you there. And, but the inner quest of man, of all men, of all, all humans, is to be free. There's a, like a gene there. And that makes you want to step out. And you've got, you know, and when you do, as I was starting to say, now I will continue and finish this, um, when I listen to God, and I'm led by God on a daily basis, and I'm not always, when, I, when I'm in pain a lot of times, it's because I wasn't listening. I wasn't really, I was just reacting. But when I'm listening to God, he keeps me in good, good, good grounds. In other words, you know, I find that I'm led here and led there, and I'm in kind of a state of joy. When I'm not following God, and sometimes rain clouds come, storms come, and I just feel generally bad, and he tells me, just get quiet and... Wait it out. So I've learned to do that too, not blame anyone or try to analyze it. Because it's just like we have storms within our, we're mainly made of water. So we have storms and tempests and things that come through that, have not, that may not even be anything specific. You just feel lousy. You, know, you feel negative about everything. So, you know, so I, when I'm listening to God, I'm going, Lord, which way here? Sometimes I'll just sometimes speak out loud in public and someone goes, what, what'd you say? I said, oh, I was just answering, you know. <laughs> and then they look at you like, God, this is, this is like, you know, one, 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 one fry short of a happy meal here or so, whatever they say. Anyway, uh, so, you, you, and you listen, and, and, and it's like, okay, which way in here, which way here, left, right, which, where should I go now? I, I just want to tell you about this, Lord. This is what happened to me today. And hey, Lord, listen to this. And you know, I'm struggling with this and I hate it. Is there any way you could help me out? I mean, or I'm just stuck with it. It's a part of a test. I mean, how can I look at it? I don't want to be a piece. I don't want to be mad at you. I mean, what is this? Those kind of things. That's, you know, every day, all day. When I listen and heed, you know, I'm pretty cool. When I get in trouble, I ask him which way. And he'll tell me. And people get so pissed off at me. Because I've had to live my life like that over the years. And, you know, when I said I would be someplace and I've darted off somewhere else. And, you know, I've been the really flaky. And, and, but it's all been kind of like, I guess, I don't even know why it goes that way. But looking back on it, there's many times that I avoided trouble by listening to the Lord where I, 
I fully intended to go someplace and do something and appear there. And, and then something else just intervened. I went somewhere else and the people there are like, well, screw you. I'm like, well, whatever, I don't care. I, I, I don't talk to you. I talked. To... You don't care if you have friends? You don't care if people don't like you because you don't, you know, you do what you say you're going to do or you're going to be here, you're going to be there. You, know, you, you just seem to be out of control. Out of control because I don't do what you want me to do or program me to do. So therefore I am bad. Or in the words of one pastor, he called me unstable, which is why he had to part company from me. You'll laugh, I know. You, we know who we're talking about. He called me unstable to her and said, I had to break fellowship because Zeph is unstable. Translate, because Zeph won't listen to you, he's going to listen to God instead, not do predictably what you want or what you predict in your mind people should do. So you as a pastor are like the blind leading the blind there. You're on a power trip, buddy. Step off. Silence. And for saying things like that, or like I think I prophesied to him about one thing, one thing, this one thing, and after that he was like, that was it, I was too unstable. And it was because of something I said that he, that he did that. I, yeah, I, I gave him a word. I told him, hey, look, you can't have it both ways. And that was it. I was labeled unstable from that day forward. That's exactly how it went down, by the way. Just so you know the history of that. I said, you can't have it both ways, but the response was, yeah, but in the church, that's the way it is. And this is, this is a pastor of a church. So he said, in the church, that's the way it is. He just was like that, and then I never heard from him again. Except through a friend who told me that he told her to get away from me because I was really bad news. And, really, you know, he just started bad-mouthing me after, you know, being really nice. After I had that one word that the Lord wanted me to share with him. So, you see, when you follow the Lord, oh, this, that one word gets people kicked out of everything. Believe me, that'll work every time. You, <laughs> they just can't handle that. They just, they're such a collective hive mind. They can't operate like that. You know what I mean? You can't, they can't have a, a, you know, I just said, look, you can't have it both ways. You know, you can't have, uh, um, have these people, you know, dialing for dollars and Satanism and then having Jesus on the other hand, having that split and that division within the church simply means eventually everyone will be conquered. I, you know, and everyone will belong to the, to the other side and then there'll be no one there for God. And he took such offense with that, it was just unreal. So instead of like working it out with a brother, you know, like the Bible says, Jesus says we should do it, it's, nope, not at all. It's the long knives into the back. And so that then confirmed to me that, you know, I was right all along. There was my confirmation. Thank you, Lord. So when you do what the Lord says, it always turns out to be right, but people get so mad because you're not going to follow the, the norm of whatever. You're not going to just behave like what they expect. So they get so angry, but then you find yourself, okay, I'm not going to give up my relationship with God here. You know, I, all I can tell you is I prayed about it and I decided to go left, not right. I decided to go right, not left. I was going to do this, but now I'm going to do that. I keep on with the Lord and he keep changing things. Things are not. And then I would agree with this guy. You know, no, I, I don't appear stable if you're following the Lord because you're changing your mind. You're going left instead of right. You're, you're doing unpredictable things because, you know, you're being informed and you're being t on a journey. You're on a path that nobody can see that path. That's very logical to you, but it may not be logical to others. They want you to check in with them. They want you to explain yourself to them. They want Abraham to say, hey, folks, I'm really thinking about just heading off into the wilderness at 80 years old and taking my old wife 
or, or wife to be or whatever. I don't know, you know, and, and, and all these people, and we're going to go look for the promised land. Right? And then as an old man, you know, I'm going to take off and, and, uh, and then oh, God tells me that my wife is going to be, um, I mean, my wife, not wife to be, my wife that my wife is going to be rejuvenated and have a kid. So I got to get on with it. People would think if you said that, if a guy, if like, you, you know, who's the guy that plays uh, Ian McClellan, who plays Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings, if he shows up, right, in full Gandalf, you know, attire, and he starts, you know, down at the cafe, and he, he tells all the friends at the cafe, hey, this is what the, this God is talking to me about. He's telling me that this is going to happen and I'm going to be the father of many nations. And we're taking off and we're going to have this kid and it's, you know, we're going to find the promised land and uh, the land of milk and honey and, and, and we're going on this journey right now. They would look at you. We're just going to walk out here in the desert, which would be straight off my porch here and just keep going with our backpacks and our, at our age and uh, start something new. People would look at you in that thing, and they would, they, first of all, they, they'd think you were completely insane, but then they'd get angry because they'd be like, how dare you get outside the norm? You're supposed to settle down and just kind of go off into the, your peaceful death. Now, you're just upsetting everybody with that. Well, we're going anyway. Well, then screw you. You're not my brother. Okay, well, I'm sorry you feel that way, but I'm, I'm just listening to God, not you. I prayed about it, and God says, let's go, and so we'll go. So Abraham believed God, and it was accorded to him as righteousness. When we hear God's voice and we heed him, that's righteous. When we ask the opinions of everybody else, as, as Job attempted to do, that's where we get into trouble. People's opinions don't matter with God. God is no respecter of persons, any person. So therefore, we seek him for our counsel. And when we get onto that way of living, then he'll say things like, um, you know, stay out of the ritual, people. Stay out of the ritual. Hello, stay out of the ritual. Okay, go left, not right. Thank you, see ya. Hey, you weren't there last night. Yeah, you say, I'm, I'm tired of bowling. <laughs> or whatever. I'm tired of playing poker. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't feeling well. Sorry, couldn't make it. Yeah, so I hope you guys are doing well without me. And so when you go on the journey of Abraham, it's accorded to you as righteousness because it's faith, it's total faith in Jesus Christ, ultimately. You may not know that yet, but I mean that's what you'll come to the full knowledge of. Or if you like, Yahweh is the light giver. Yeshua, Jesus is the light. Right? Or if you like, well, we could go on and on with metaphors, but it's all one, John 17. That's another chapter that really threatens the whole, because you know, it shows you don't need anything but that. You don't need organized religion in any way, shape, or form. People have it. I'm not going to go against it. When, you know, uh, the, the, the only reason I don't have organized religion is because I was fortunate enough to be an oddball enough to be kicked out of it, most of it since I was a kid. So that I consider to be a blessing now, not a curse. I don't want to be part of the hive mind. I don't want to be like gossiping about so-and-so or jumping in the sack of the, you know, the, the neighbor's wife or any of that. I don't want to be involved in any of that or, or whispering about it in the background of whether you think this pastor is any good or not or you know, whether his wife is a lesbian. I, I don't even want to think about it. I don't even want to go there. I don't want any part of it. There's just so much more to do than that to life. I mean, there's so much more to do. We, we, look, we have so much to do, it's unbelievable. I'm going to have to get back and, and rest now. This is going on 5 o'clock. I've got to, I definitely have to rest to get this up. But I have so much to do during the day. 
on the path that God's providing for me that I just, I don't, I can't even get through the day. Every day is like a blur because it's, it's, there's a lot of work going on and it's, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, he's got a purpose. He's got no, well, the public doesn't know, but we're, you know, like busy beavers behind the scenes and, and, uh, but asking the Lord, which way to go? You know? Asking the Lord which way to go. Like he wanted me to do this podcast because he wanted to tell you that instead of judging each other, we just got to cut each other some slack that, you know, we can point out the corruption in the hopes that it's going to clean it up. But look, here's what I've learned. I have pointed out all the corruption, just like the talk show host, just like Michael Savage and Alex Jones and, you know, and spiritual podcasters and people that talk about God and Jesus and prophecy and all that and, I've done all that, and I put on guests that were experts in prophecy and experts in all this stuff. Let me explain something to you. The way it is right now is God's will. If you're led to change it, that's also God's will. But it's not going to change. I can just tell you, don't, don't do, this is something God would do in a big way that everyone would understand. But right now, it can't change because the DNA can't change. Know that the world is a reflection of what's within us. But also, in conflict, the kingdom of God is within us, the key of which is Jesus Christ, opening the door of which is Jesus Christ, to the kingdom within, that is birthed within, that, that begins the healing process of the breach or the split of um, the DNA, which was done, I guess, to create slaves. As long as the DNA we carry is in us, we will harm each other. We will fly chemtrails. We'll put fluoride in the water. We'll have World War III. We'll put people in concentration camps. I mean, what, or whatever people are afraid of. We'll have financial collapses. We'll co- confiscate bank accounts in Cyprus. We'll We'll, uh, we'll have a corrupt government. We'll spy on everybody. As long as that DNA is there, all that's going on full tilt. And there are nothing as... Look, I spent 10 years yelling at people. Seriously yelling at people. You know, preaching. And then, you know, that was a stage. Everything I've gone through has just proven the point that I was at that stage of the spiritual walk. And now I realize that was all vanity. Do you know that in all the yelling and confrontational stuff I was doing, and even last week I was doing it, less though, right, you know, as I've gotten older, because the walk, as it comes closer to the light, as you come closer to death, um, it's just not important anymore because I understand that yelling won't change anything. Confronting people about, say, something like satanic ritual abuse in the church, Okay, that's not going to do any good. I mean, it, it, it's not going to do any good because they're not going to change. No, no one's going to look into it. Geraldo's not going to suddenly be getting on his horse and riding out to find it out or Oprah or something. It is what it is. It's not going to be changed by yelling. By yelling about Satan and being mad about Satan and yelling at Satanists and all that, it's not going to change. It's not going to change, okay? It is not going to change because the bottom line is the um, it's God's will that it is you know the way it is. I it, that's the best way I can put it. That if it's not like well God allowed it or God's in control. God's in control. The split in us, all the whole journey we're going through. To heal the breach. I mean, the DNA you can look at like a, like a, a broken bridge over a ravine. We can't get to the other side, which is say eternity or the way we were, before it was messed with. So you know we're stuck in this. All the governments, all institutions, all the churches, all the mosques, all the temples, all the all the uh, you know um, uh, synagogues, everything that's institutional is a reflection of that DNA. Everything is a perfect reflection. You know, the outwardly you have the proud military parade. 
you have the gifting of the Medal of Honor. And then behind the scenes, you have all kinds of naughtiness and nastiness and, and horrible stuff. You have people saying brilliant words about others and words of gratitude on the podium. Behind the scenes, words of slander and hatred and cursing. Out of the same mouth on the same day. It's absolutely revealing of a physical problem. And that's where it really is. It's physical and spiritual, but it's mainly, it's a handicap that cannot be overcome by preaching at people in the way that we had been doing. By confrontational preaching, it will not, it may make a couple people feel guilty, but it's not going to change anything because we're still, we have to address the actual problem. Unless we're going to address the actual problem, we're not going to have a solution. This, the problem is, with this breach, the only thing that was going to heal that breach is God, is Yahweh, Jesus, the, the one, that Messiah the, to be rescued, to, to, to be that bridge, that heal that breach. And without that... Um, and even, w- and even with that, you still have the physical DNA, which you then fight against, I suppose. It's your spirit fights against your flesh. And that's a conflict. Therefore, all our institutions, our police departments, our military, our hospitals, everything is going to be corrupt, our churches. So it's understandable. I could even make a case for it's not anybody's fault, except for the willful. I know there's a few people out there who see willful purposeful handlers, controllers, people that are corrupt. I see people that are corrupt every day. I mentioned one here earlier today. Um, You know, but it's understandable because we are corrupt. I'm corrupt, you're corrupt, we're all corrupt. But it's at that DNA level where it begins. Without that being fixed, um, our institution, okay, of our own will, we cannot fix it. So therefore, the satanic ritual abuse, the satanic way, the, 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 the way of the world is a perfect reflection of that's in us. In other words, we do this ugly, evil way of the world thing so that on the surface we can have this nice society where people are very reasonable and whatever. And then we have to kind of pay the devil underneath and out back and in the woods or in the other room or whatever, nod, wink. And that cannot end unless the Lord ends it. It's going to be in the church, it's going to be in the mosque, it's going to be in the synagogue, it's going to be in the military, it's going to be in the, at the college, it's going to be in the hospital, it's going to be in the, in the, in, in, in the meeting, it's going, to be, it's going to be the kids out back and you know the kids taking drugs, it's going to be the, the three-piece suits in the boardrooms, it's, it's going to be everywhere. Where there's DNA, it'll be there. Then people get called on the spiritual path and they change. They, no, the Lord, it's, it's, the Bible says, come out of her, my people, and be separate regarding Babylon, a mystery Babylon too. It means that's the world system, okay? So come out of her and be separate. Because the Lord and the holy angels, everyone's waiting for you. Then on the other side, you know, split other side, they're saying, hey, join us and let's be together. Everyone's waiting for you. Hey, Come on out of her and be separate. Everyone's waiting for you. My gosh, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's called a split, both two opposite directions. And as long, and that's in our DNA. That's what it's, it's, we need to depersonalize this because a lot of people take issue. When I see people doing corrupt things or corrupt or mean or whatever, I may opt to move away from them, you know, um, or go here or there. I really don't move away. I move toward other things. I mean, there's always things pulling at me to go here or there. So I'm, you know what I mean? It's nothing, I, want, I don't want to personalize anything. But, you, you know, when I see people trying to control and trying to do things, I just, uh, I don't blame them personally. But when I see them being corrupt, I'm just like, oh, they did something corrupt. No, no, no. See, they, we have to get beyond that. We all do something corrupt. So therefore, if we start keeping score like that, then there's, every single person will be your enemy. So, the, you know, and, and including yourself. It's when you realize what it is, the guy, you know, can be corrupt to you 
And there could be some things you don't want to really deal with and it's ugly and awful. But you can then not judge the person. You just kind of move to the Lord where you want to go and you just kind of move wherever the Lord tells you. And without judging, saying, yeah, Lord, in your time. You know, protect me from the uh, nastiness out there, Lord. But no, I fully understand that they're going to act that way. So, so I'm not holding a grudge. I'm not needing to be a vigilante. Of course they do that. If I was in their position, I'd do the same thing. There but for the grace of God go I. So this is, you know, we get, see, because if, if I did hold a grudge, I'd be held back from my own journey. I couldn't get down the road. I couldn't have the joy of the Lord as I have right now. Can't hold on to those things. People did do corrupt things because it's, it's really not their fault. Some people are strong in battling it and some people aren't. But it's a human thing to embrace corruption and to do corrupt things. It's just, it's just as natural as getting out of bed. It's as natural as taking a leak. It's as natural as eating breakfast. You know, it's just, you know, it is what it is. It's a physical problem played out in a spiritual plane with physical, spiritual intertwinings and implications that only can be really addressed by the Lord Jesus Christ, God, Yahweh, the creator, if you like. But that's the only place for redress about being made the way you were made. The Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes, but you see... Then we have the split personality of the Christian, who then will say that on the other ta- hand, on one hand, and then say, "I'm a piece of crap." On the other, the Bible says it's a perfect reflection of that DNA. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm a piece of crap. Haven't you ever noticed how both of those things are there in the, you know the church and fellowships and whatnot? I mean, there's that both there. How can that be? Let me pose it to the experts out there. Hey, you. How can that be? How can it be that we're fearfully and wonderfully made but a piece of crap? Again, that's the perfect reflection. I have no problem with those two statements. To me, those are exactly what I would expect to find given the DNA of man. Precisely. Given the dual nature of this world. Right? Again, each thing is at a different stage. We're fearfully and wonderfully made Overall, yes, if you count the, the whole story. We're a piece of crap, yes, if you count the evil, corrupt part of us that does evil, corrupt things, yes. And people who embrace that side or they embrace God's side, it's like, no. And then, and then Bill Clinton's out there trying to embrace both sides, right? He's trying to do the middle way, which is to accept the corruption, accept the good, and just kind of institutionalize that so that people know the rules. You're going to have to get, in other words, you give some to the devil over here so that you can go be a, a pure heart person over here. So you can still have all your friends. If everyone knows, you know, embraces the truth and is without denial, realizes we have corruption and we have goodness, and so we embrace both the middle way rather than going to one side or the other, and we will have a utopia. And it's like, the only thing is about that is you're still calling it corruption. You see that what they really want to do is call it goodness. And they're calling good evil and evil good. And then they want you to embrace that as the middle way. That's really it. But see, it's just perfectly reflective of the same issue as we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We're pieces of crap. So they would say, we're not pieces of crap. We're awesome. We're gods. And... We have to tone down the good parts of us, the goody two-shoes parts that don't, that want to be separate and not part of the corruption and all that. And so we have this ping pong effect within each person and all our institutions reflect the way that we as humanity are made. If you have a problem with the government, it's you. You got a problem with the church, still you. Got a problem with the DMV, it's you. Problem with the government bureaucracy then on all levels, that's you. 
problem with militaristic adventures in the United States, perpetual war for years. Yep, you're that warrior. You're that president. You're that abortionist. Sorry. But are we all one? No, we're not all one. Embracing that idea of this corrupt DNA and good DNA together is absolutely false because every human being wants out of that. Every human being wants to be free. And as long as that DNA is like that, it's called corrupt all across the board. It's we are not free, are we? So therefore, it's not good to embrace the, the quote, middle way on that. It's not good to call um, evil good and good evil. So, no, we can't embrace it. But what we can understand is that it makes sense for people to be corrupt to do corrupt things. So I'm not getting so upset over what they're doing. I'm free to have a little joy or go this way or that or have an espresso or do whatever. I don't need to worry about it. I'm sorry they're aborting babies. I'm sorry that, that the, the army on supposedly our side is killing people and giving them chemical weapons. I'm sorry there's all this nasty stuff going on, but it's really not, you know, surprising to me. You know? Huh? Is it surprising to you? That's what I would expect to see given the data that I have about the DNA of human. that we would do corrupt things and we would do good things and they would be in conflict with one another and you can have this good thing coming out of someone that does just awful things. They could be done on the same day and without even memory of one another. It's that, it's the world, you know. Jesus heals that breach, heals the DNA. He replaces the DNA ultimately. And it's a mystery what happens. But it's... um, I liken it to getting out of a prison, as I consider this planet a prison. I think anybody with any sense would. I, I cannot imagine looking in the mirror and going, boy, you're, you're great, you're awesome, you're just amazing. You, you, you know, because I know that, 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 you know, a lot of it stinks. And a lot of it's good. I, I know there's both. So if you just say I'm awesome only and all this, I'd think, well, what kind of mind control trip are you running? That's not the case. I, I, don't, I don't want to be all negative, and yet I don't want to be all positive. I'm somewhere in the middle. I'm positive on some things. I'm kind of regretful of other things, but I understand why they have to both be there. So do not marvel. The Bible says do not marvel when you see these evil things coming to pass, okay? They're going to come to pass so long as that DNA... The, the, the ticking time bomb is the DNA. That's the ticking time bomb. They're trying to change the DNA of, of humans and create hybrids that don't have this problem. Of course, what they're, but, but you see, they have the problem and they're making replicants in their own image. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, Ray. You guys are, you know, anything that you won't put your finger on is going to be a reflection of you. So you're going to make avatars of yourselves and die. And then you're like, your, your brain and all that will go on in a robot. And, um, but it won't be you who's actually there thinking. It will be the robot. And you'll be gone. And your legacy will be this machine rather than a human being. And that's the singularity, folks. That's where the singularity eventually goes. They've got all, all their corruption in it. The hive mind is there, right? When we merge our mind with machine, Google's got a thing you want to implant in your forehead or in your head somewhere in your brain to connect us all up to the big machine, the singularity, so we got that. But look at what we really have. We have the hive mind working around the queen, right? The, 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 the woman, the, the, um, the sovereign, right? The female figure that runs. Well, that goes back to the Egyptian iconography. But, you know, most people agree that, you know, God has got like this male figure. So you have this female figure that runs the world. Like Lucifer is a female figure, really, in a sense. Anyway, it's, it's okay, whatever the... That, those are just projections of man. Um, but anyway, you've got the hive revolving around the queen bee, and you've got everyone all efficient. Notice worker bees, right? They want workers, worker, worker, worker. Everyone take their place. There's no arguments. Everyone's connected up. There's no disagreements. There's no guns. 
There's no violence. This machine Google's working on will be the answer to peace on earth based on a hive mind collective and very, of the one tribe of all is one and one is all of the new age moniker. Absolutely, share and share alike with the communism brought in and uh, no need for police. As long as everyone wears their Google brain chip, all will be beautiful. And I can just imagine what a Philip K. Dick could do with a story like that, right? You, echoes of Blade Runner and things. Yeah, exactly. 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 And so that's what they're all working on. They're very busy working on that. And then they get the other thing they really want, which is the elimination of human, which isn't even their idea, but the idea that's been put on them through their programmers. So they're not free. They're slaves. And where they're going is their own destruction. Do they know it? No, of course they don't know it. No, they want to beat death by becoming machines, figuring that there is no soul. And they, you know, they want to get rid of the inferior machines, us. They consider us machines, and they consider us to have no soul either. So they figure they can do what they want with us because they made us. Or at least that's their thinking. So, oh, it's going to happen. It's, it's already, behind the scenes, it's already, actually, it's already happening. There are people walking around you that are clones and everything else that you don't know. And, you know, there's all kinds of things. I mean, picture them being about 500 years ahead of where we are now technologically and that that's all available. Yeah, and that the aliens are really just us. You know, it's just, in a sense that's true, in a sense it isn't, but I'm just saying it's, it's just really bizarre and... And, and yet, it's the perfect reflection. The DNA we have will only lead human to his own destruction should there not be God's intervention. It can never, as Jesus said, good fruit does not come from uh, a corrupt tree. The tree is our DNA. You can't get good fruit out of man. Only corrupt fruit comes, only a corrupt result will occur if God doesn't intervene and save us. And it's just that simple. And when you look at it that way, how does it help me? It helps me not to personalize it when people do things to me or to others that I think are awful, that I, but I understand then, I expect it. In other words, I'm not surprised. And when I'm not surprised, that means I can take it in stride. When I'm taking it in stride, it means I can forgive based on the scientific evidence of the situation rather than making it an emotional issue each time out. That way, friends, family can be just awful. And they are when you have the Lord. They are awful at times. Um, anyway, we needn't bother ourselves. I will just, uh, I have to leave now. I've been a pleasure talking to you. I have... You got me uh, kind of on a, on a roll in terms of feeling. I wonder if this is going to carry on throughout the day. I've really been busy. You'll see the fruits of that labor one of these days, I hope. Got to get organized. <laughs> I'm just so bad at this. Um, yeah, and the other thing is, uh, this is a note to Frankie, since I use this for like dictation here. Um, I'm looking for another radio opportunity, and I'm hoping you, can, you, you, you and I can maybe do something along those lines. I'm... I'm uh, got to put our thinking caps on, so I got to talk to you. And uh, you know, you know, radio is. I've always liked radio, and I'm feeling the need to kind of put a lot of things together. And I, I just feel like in the future, whether it's this voice, if God gives me a word to give you, you know, or not, or others, you know, interviews, whatever. I just feel like there's a need to kind of feed people information. Like this word today will make you feel at peace and um, get you off being just so bummed out about everything, you know, and, and see the other guy more as your brother, and you may not like what he just did or what they did or didn't do, but, you, you know, it's easier to cut some slack. When you don't cut slack, you know, you're holding on. Then that sickness, that wears down in your body, you know. I, I, you got to just let go of all this stuff because they're going to insult you all day long. You know, everybody must get stoned, you know, which is about being stoned with rocks in Bob Dylan's song. 
you know, they, they'll stone you when you're having a good day. That someone comes up and says something, it triggers a, a mental response, a memory, and the next thing you know, you're bummed out. This is, this is because our hearts have to be full up and satisfied with the Lord. And then just stuff falls away because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Whether we're friends or not friends or seeing, it doesn't matter. Whether we're going to be alone or together, either one is equal. Because the Lord's there all the time. You see? So I don't have to go fill up the tank on you. Nothing like, you know, getting drained. I know what it's like to be drained when people are filling up on me and I'm just like, oh my God, Vampireville, I just feel drained. You know, I'm like, ah, uh, shoot, I'm drained. How'd that happen? I remember once I got drained, like, you know, through, it must have been some magical ritual because I just suddenly fell on the floor like I just had no energy whatsoever. It was weird. It was supernatural. And I realized what happened. But it was done remotely, not even talking to me. And things like that, I'm like, all day long, humans are doing those kind of things. And I fully expect it from everybody. Vibes, thoughts, control, drain. Get around people, notice how your energy goes up? Yeah, you're giving each other energy. There's just a natural synergy that occurs. Well, sometimes it's the other way. It's like a seesaw. You go up, the other guy goes down. And then they have to part company. And and a lot of times it's not even intentional. It's just energy, flowing of energy. Moving of energy. And then in witchcraft, they, they, want to, they want to dominate that and they want to control the currents of the energy. So good luck to you people that serve us and bad luck to those people that serve Jesus. Right? We'll take away energy from them and give it to you guys who are like rock stars. Cool. Or whatever it is. And that's just like an example of Western civilization as it's crumbling. But now... I think I need to leave you with this. As Western civilization is crumbling, notice, do notice, that there isn't enough to go around. I mean, you can throw the virgins on the fire, cut their hearts out up on the uh, Chichen Itza uh, pyramid, have the high priest throw the bodies down the, the steps, bludgeoning and maiming and destroying them dismembering them. You can do that all day long, but Quetzalcoatl, Lucifer, the snake, the serpent, he won't give you anything anymore. Used to be he would put up like a, say, a Justin Bieber, so be like, you know, you know, people take off and go viral, whatever. Every once in a while something like that happens. You know, a big winner at the racetrack, the lottery, whatever. Um, you know, and people believe that, hey, uh, what did he do? I'm not saying Bieber did. I, I know nothing about him. So I'm, I'm just using, I'm just looking at the world as theater and that there's a guy running it, okay? And that guy is not, the, the guy in charge of illusion isn't God. <laughs> Although he's beholden to him and under control of him. I mean, but it's a lot of things what you see are just illu- magic tricks. So you see this stuff, but I think what the propaganda was, see, if you play ball the world's way, you might be one, the next, next one up there. And that's gone. So people are slowly waking up to understand that that was all a lie. The world was, is a lie. And that the, rule, the spiritual rules were a lie too. I'm still remembering a friend that said, if it's like you say, Z, I'm going to kill myself. Right, you're going to really go to the Lord and die to yourself. And you're going to keep on going realizing there wasn't anything here. And you're not going to look back like Lot's wife. You're going to keep going. That's right. That's death. Correct. So yeah, you're going to, you're going to kill yourself because you're going to not believe in this anymore. Believing this is like Truman believing that he was in a real life. It's not real. Don't stop believing is, I'm sorry, it's propaganda. All those songs were propaganda for the, for the social engineers, for the German school of mind control. The, look, the artists, you can't blame them. They want to be famous. They want people to listen to music. It, 
They, they did that so they could get ahead, and it worked. Kudos to them, but it's not real. It's not real. Those of us who shun fame, I think, have the advantage. As a result, today I'm, gonna, I'm giving, on my SoundCloud page, I've got uh, music there, just this, all the work I've been doing, I'm going to put some more tracks up there. They're all 24-bit, 44.1 hertz wave files. So if there's anything there you like, I'm going to make it all downloadable right now. Just, just in the spirit of this conversation. I mean, there might be a song there you might like, maybe not. There's a the different variety. There's Kelly and Rich was there and we did some things and I've got some more Kelly stuff I'm going to put up there. And then there's individual things that I've done and there's stuff I'm working on today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day and forever. And I can't even stop. And it's a kind of poetic project. But the, the bottom line is I've had revelations about this whole thing. Freely give, freely receive. I've had revelations about all this. It's like, you know, people are playing this and they're playing that and they're trying to get ahead and they're trying to find a way. There is no market for music anymore for anybody, including famous artists. So I just got this revelation today. This, I'm just going to go... I'm just going to go tap all the downloadable things. It takes a while to download. Some are like 70 megs each, but again, you can make MP3s, share them, make your own CDs, make a playlist, whatever. Uh, enjoy music, and at least you have music coming from a, a place that is invisible, that the world won't know about. The other thing is, I, I on purpose, I absolutely, absolutely w want, um, as we go forward with our media company, I don't know how, th there's, a, there's a way. There's a way, there's a way. The Zeph report has to be changed too, there's a way. But uh, a way to integrate all this so that it all kind of makes sense and uh, that, that you know, you're getting fed and informative. And it's just been hard to figure out because I've looked at this music thing from every different angle and I've concluded just what I know other people concluded a few years ago. It's over. There is no way to make money with music. So it has to be part of other productions, movies, or it's got to be part of videos people like. But to, that will get advertising. So I think it's an advertising play, and I don't see any other play. Um, that's, that's one play, and then the other one is uh, uh, licensing to, say, if a, if, if a documentary or film wants something from you. Uh, if it's a big film, you can get some money, but if not, you know, 500 bucks, I don't know, 100 bucks, not enough to live on. There's actually no way to make a living with music. Um, unless you want to go out on the road and um, perform whatever it is you do. Uh, what I do is the, the mixing console, the mixing environment, is my, that's my instrument. And my roots kind of came from uh, electronica and dub, dubbing, you know, uh, working with uh, sounds, but the, the sounds don't mean anything, whether they're loops or samples of, from from um, instruments or raw sound, doesn't matter, or play it live, it's all equal to me. So you give me someone's voice, if I track someone's voice, I have a guitar loop, I have a real guitar, I have a bass, it's all equal. Yeah, I'm going to mess with it all. The, the actual creating of the music happens after, and I sort of lost my way on that. You know, I mean, not, not completely, but it's, it's, it's happening now because I realize my roots. My instrument, I'm the composer, my instrument is all those samples taken real, live, fake, um, sounds that aren't intended to be what they are, made into something else. It all gets made in the mixing board through like effects, automation, all that. That's the instrument, not the actual song or the actual, right? So I, I went through a strange period where I was trying to go more literal and that was a huge mistake, and I'm off that now. And, um, you know, it's not a mistake, but it was part of a... I could see that was going down a nowhere hole. Because, uh, for me, my roots are that mixing board is the environment. It really is. And so, it's, the performance is irrelevant to me. 
the people who play on it are irrelevant. No, you know, it's, if you, you work with me in the future, well, if I use a sample of something you sung or did, I will do what I want with it. There will, you know, I mean, that's, and if, if we're going to come up with a song, it has to be treated in that manner, or I ain't interested. Because it ain't me. If it's not me, I'm not doing it. It's a waste of my time. So Godspeed. And, uh, Oh, shoot. Santa Barbara, you lasted this long? No? Yes? <laughs> um, it's a progression, man. You know, everyone's going to get there. You know, pretty much, unless you're just an amoral, you know, totally evil, no conscience. You know, and there, there are those, robots, whatever. Don't count, but, you know, you're going to get there. Uh, but don't don't get mad at me for um, like I know my friend did that I haven't seen in a long time, you know for you know picking on he thought I was picking on the churches or saying that's the heart of Babylon or whatever. It's like well you know that school, this you know society whatever. Um, there's a mystery there, and uh, but he thoroughly disagreed with me. But then he's somebody that's in the world, so I mean you know of course he's going to disagree with me. But I'm not conflicting with him. That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm not conflicting with you either. You know, they're, they're just it's never going to be settled so long as we have this inside us. It's not going to be settled. It will be settled eventually, not by us, by him. I think we all agree on that. But it's not settled now. And to say it is, is false. To say, it, you just can't do that if you make a blanket statement one way or the other extreme. It's wrong. It's broken within us. So all everything else is going to be a reflection of that. So Mystery Babylon, yes, is in the church. It's also in politics. It's also in the banking system. It's, it's, in, it's everywhere. I just wish that we could be friends rather than seeing these things as conflicts. When they're not. Being punished for saying the world is round or flat or whatever, you should be punished either way, whatever you say about it. The conflicts that we are saying yes and no at the same moment, that's the issue we face. And that's why we can't communicate. It's not my fault. Don't blame me. You point your finger at this and that and the other thing so that you can then be justified in your position. All of our positions are equally effed. <laughs> There is no position, that's the point. You know, this thing within us is solvable on a temporary basis with the Holy Spirit, with the Spirit of God in you. But then you die, you know? I mean, that's the thing. You, you lose that sense of self. No, I'm not talking about the virtuous people who are trying to look like I'm wearing a mask of losing sense of self. I'm talking about... You, when you're really quiet and alone and you look in the mirror, you don't see anybody. <laughs> you know, or you see everybody. You, you, you just, that individuality thing is gone, but now you're a sovereign individual. <laughs> it's so bizarre. But you lose. And I'm telling you, I, from experience, this is what Solomon was talking about. You lose that. That along with the vanity of, you know, creating books and works and things, you lose it. It's like, you know... It's, it's when I'm working in the studio. I, I have no idea who's in the studio working. I'm just doing it because I'm led to do it, but I don't have any, I, you know, I say I'm the dub guy, but, you know, I could be anything. It could change tomorrow. We could just do folk for the roof. I could just flake out on that. I mean, anything I say, I don't trust it. Except for when it's coming from God, which is what you've got to trust. If it's from him, don't trust me. Trust him. Discern it. Try the spirits. Maybe some of this makes sense. Maybe some of it doesn't. Maybe throw some of it out. It's not going to bother me either way or throw the whole thing out or tell me I'm full of it. The more letters I get where people tell me I'm full of it, um, the better it's been for me, actually, because the, you know, the more I understand those, it's irrelevant what people think. Let them say. Let them say. I'll let you say. Let me say. But I'm not in conflict with you, brother, about that. Uh, the church is not what you said. I disagree with you. It's like, um, well, I just reported what was there. I was like a reporter. I just reported the facts. I'm not trying. To, it's not my opinion what goes on. 
in any institution or every, or in the world or anywhere. It's just, it is what it is. It's just DNA reflection uh, wherever you go. So I believe this word has clarified it and solved the breach between We both agree that we're both a-holes, right? Or <laughs> And we're both decent. And we're both, not even both. There is no both. There's no such thing as both. Both points of view is the reflection of the DNA again. Why is it like that? Why is it corrupted? But no, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. It's corrupted. Okay, how about this one? Stanley Kubrick's brilliant movie, Stanley Kubrick, by the way, is the best director that ever lived, in my opinion. You can try the spirits. Say, no, Woody Allen, Woody Allen. No. Okay, fine. So you can have your Woody Allen. Maybe that's something you really like. Okay, Roman Polanski, Rosemary's Baby. How are you going to beat that? Well, Eyes Wide Shut, in my opinion, beat that. But let's, let's go down to, let's go to, uh, well, they're both different. Let's go to, uh, I love stories about evil. I love movies about the devil. I love movies about demons. I love movies about total horror. You said, you know, well, how can you like that? I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, horror to me is like romantic comedy to somebody else. It just, to me, it feels like an old friend. It's comforting. Even though I, I, I don't agree with doing evil, there's just something about it. You know, call it the adolescent in me. Then we'll never grow up. Thank God. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Who wants to grow up? <laughs> uh, grow up and die. Anyway, no, the, 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 uh, the thing is, there is no breach if you understand that we're capable of Good, we're capable of evil. We are conflicted within, and our opinions are not trustworthy because they conflict with each other. We say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm a piece of garbage, a lowly sinner. I'm, not, I'm filthy rags. My best, my best day, my best intentions are filthy rags to the Lord, but I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. How is that possible in the same sentence, in the same Bible? I rest my case, Your Honor. Did I do it, Santa Barbara? Did I win the case? Or should I say, did my client Jesus win? Absolutely. Okay. Well, you know, you can email me or something. Uh, you know, but the thing is, there's no you or me. It's just, there's only God and God's plan for earth and we're called to be of service to him. That's really it. And when you follow him around all day or go where he, you're being of servant. You're actually working for God. Because you're denying, and after you deny yourself, well, if you don't have a self to deny, meaning you have no direction, you have no, you have no direction and you have no goal. And you have no motivation and no nothing. You're just kind of there. Uh, that's pretty good because God can work with that. So he gives you a direction and he, you know, you just have to forget it making sense and just kind of a go and, and, you can't keep counsel with other people because they're always going to tell you you're demonic unless you're on their, in their club or on their side of the fence. So, you know, there you go. I, I don't know why it's like this. Other people that you know are not on the spiritual path and they're going to come down on you. They would have told Abraham he was just... They might have even locked Abraham up in a mental hospital had there been one. Sure. He's going to hurt the community by taking people out in the desert. They're just going to get killed. All right. Shalom, shalom. Hasta la vista, baby. Until we meet again, Zeph Daniel, Zedja, the roving desert prophet in quotes, producer, and soon to be integrated from multiple personalities into one cohesive media blitz. I love you. I'm praying for you. And I will see you next time.